Hi, welcome to the English Academic Facilitator. Here's Sapali with Pearson Edexcel International GCSC English Language A Paper 2 Poetry and Prose Texts and Imaginative Writing. So today I'm discussing 2018 June Morning Paper 2. Today we are discussing section A reading and here you need to remind yourself of the story of an hour by Kate Chauvin. If I remind you some contextual factors related to the story, this is written in 1885 and by the time she wrote this story, American women hadn't got voting rights as it happened in 1920 and she has died before that. The theme of this story is freedom of women in 1800 Victorian society in America. Chauvin being a contemporary short story writer at that period, she really wanted to criticize her society where women's roles were narrowly defined in households as wives. She portrays Mrs. Mallard as one of the many victims in her society and her thoughts and feelings are brought out by her monstrous joy that overwhelms her realization that her husband's death would render her free to live as she chooses. This highlights the repressive nature of Victorian marriages. So this is about the story and let's see the question. How does the writer present the character of Mrs. Mallard in the story of an hour? So this is the question and you need to go by the rubrics given. Mrs. Mallard's thoughts and actions, Mrs. Mallard's relationships with her husband and her sister and the use of language and structure. And as usual, you need to support your answer with close reference to the passage with brief quotations. Here's the extract and you can get the quotations from this extract. She sees her life as being absolutely hers and she hopes for a long life in which to enjoy this feeling. But this forbidden joy disappears as quickly as it came, but the taste of it is enough to kill her. So that's the gist of this story. And now let's see how we should organize the answer. Well, you can organize your answer in five paragraphs. Para 1 should be the introduction to the historical background and the situation of the story. And Para 2 should contain Mrs. Mallard's thoughts and actions to the situation. And Para 3 should be Mrs. Mallard's relationships with her husband and her sister. And in Para 4, you need to analyze the language and structure implied by the writer and then you can wrap up the whole thing with a brief conclusion. Here are some points for Mrs. Mallard's thoughts and actions to the situation. Some more points with quotations. Some more points. Here are some other points. And now let's see Mrs. Mallard's relationships with her husband and her sister. And here are some points with some quotations to support your points. Here are some more points. Now let's see the language devices implied by the writer. Here are some more points with more quotes. Some more points. And some more points with quotations to support the point.
Well, other than linguistic devices, there are some structural devices employed by the writer. One is a symbol. Uh, she has used uh, two symbols, open window and the spring. Open window for uh, her unlimited freedom and spring for the chance of a new life. And she juxtaposes uh, to contrast between what society expects from her and her real internal feelings. Here are some important things to consider before you write. You need to have perceptive understanding of the text before you write and you need to select and interpret the information or ideas and you need to be persuasive in clarifying the points. Perceptive understanding and analysis of language and structure is essential and how language and structure are used by writers to achieve effects including use of vocabulary, sentence structure should be there and the selection of references should be discriminating and you need to clarify the points that you made. Let's see how I organized my introduction. The writer Kate Chauvin, as a contemporary underprivileged woman in 1800 America who hasn't got even voting rights until she died in 1904, has written this short story, The Story of an R, to bring forward a repressive state of a woman's heart in a tightly constrained marriage life in Victorian patriarchal society. Her focus is to criticize her society at a time and how narrowly defined women's roles in households as wives by using the true inner feelings and thoughts of Mrs. Mallard and her relationships with her husband and her sister. This is my second paragraph uh, that is about Mrs. Mallard's thoughts and actions to the situation. In this short story, she portrays Mrs. Mallard as one of the many victims in her society and her feelings and thoughts are brought out by her monstrous joy that overwhelms her realization that her husband's death would render her free to live as she chooses. This highlights the repressive nature of Victorian marriages. Chauvin introduces Mrs. Mallard's character as somewhat different from other women by the way she reacts to the sudden death of her husband, especially with the paralyzed inability to accept its significance. In addition, the language is carefully chosen to suggest her fragility such as afflicted, great care and as gently as possible. The use of metaphoric expressions like storm of grief and pressed down by a physical exhaustion that haunted her body and seemed to reach into her soul convey her reaction to the death. Her actions are also portrayed with powerful expressions like wild abandonment and storm of grief that shows her outpouring of emotions, but its sudden disappearance foreshadows her husband's death might be quite liberating to her by giving some doubt for the reader whether she is actually in grief or an excitement. Her vision of a long procession beyond that bitter moment, writer wanted to paint a picture of a sharp sense of positivity about her independence and also, the repetition of free helps the reader accept her feelings. Moreover, Mrs. Mallard is portrayed as a solitary being with references to her resistance towards her sister's entry to the room and to acknowledge her support and also dashing to her room where no one would follow her. She often also exposes her exhaustion after the news by a couple of alliterative words, pressed and physical. Mallard's short-lived grief is symbolized with a simile as a child sleeps in order to infantilize her reaction. Instead, she dwells alone with her thoughts and has a heightened awareness of her senses. The use of keen and bright eyes gives her a sense of vibrancy and aliveness that is compounded by 
the description of the speed of her pulses and heartbeat all show her extreme excitement. Apart from that, through her character, Chauvin throws a harsh light on the pathetic situation of married women who endure the hardships of quite repressed marriages by using the abstract noun repression. And that is the end of the second paragraph. And let's move on to the third paragraph. Third paragraph contains the points for Mrs. Mallard's relationships with her husband and her sister. Mrs. Mallard's idea of blind persistence about relationships clearly reveals that she felt trapped and controlled in a patriarchal dynamic. Further, her conflicted ideas about her feelings for her husband is brought out by broken sentences such as, yet she had loved him, sometimes, often she had not. Even though her sister is quite caring and she breaks the news to her as gently as possible, especially as she is afflicted with a heart disease, she is not closer, closer to her and prefers to be alone. She had to hide and veil her intelligence during her marriage and becomes an intelligent rational being with this liberation as a widow. So that's about the relationship uh, between her husband and uh, her sister. Now let's see how I analyzed the language and the structure employed by the writer. Chauvin has successfully developed the events that occurred within a short period of time using rich language and structure. She juxtaposes Mrs. Mallard's real internal feelings with what society expects from her using positive language to show her thoughts on her new life. Through these devices, the writer reveals how a repressed woman hides and veils her intelligence during her marriage and becomes an intelligent, rational being with this liberation. By doing this, Millard is trying to abandon this false social self that she has cultivated over the years. Using significant symbols such as open window to symbolize her unlimited freedom, outside her world and the spring for a chance of a new life. In order to demonstrate a range of feelings she is experiencing, Chopping uses some powerful adverbs such as fearfully, tumultuously, absolutely and unwittingly. Additionally, moment of illumination, Possession of self-assertion and strongest impulse of her being are some prepositional phrases she has employed to create a sense of relationships between people and feelings. Moreover, a range of sentence types, what was it, what did it matter, and body and soul free, brings out her extreme emotions and a range of feelings. And also, short sentences such as, what did it matter, go away, often she had not, create a sense of tension within her. Chauvin has repeated the phrase life might be long to show the contrast in her feelings from before and after the death of her husband. Further, the simile like a goddess of victory together with the alliterative words, whispered words are used to reveal her growing excitement at freedom. All in all, Chopin has created a great work of art to criticize her own society she lived at that time by using rich language and structural devices in order to bring out suppressed feelings and thoughts of underprivileged women. And that is the end of the answer. Well, that's it for today. And if you think this would be helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel because it really helps my channel grow. Thanks for watching and see you with another video soon. Bye-bye.